This is Wednesday, May 24th. There are 56 days until San Diego Comic-Con 2017. Welcome to SD Concast, the official podcast of the San Diego Comic-Con unofficial blog. B-A-N-U-H-T-W-E, go. Oh my god, I love Live Journal and my Live Journal loves me. Current food is hyper current news on Refuge 73. I love the color scheme in pink and purple. Good evening. I am your host, James Riley. Joining me on the podcast tonight, Carrie Dixon. Hey, everybody. Also joining me, outside Comic-Con herself, Kim Twombly. Hi, everyone. And our special guest tonight is Patrick Ballesteros, artist of the 25 Cent Wonders and Punny Sweater series and so much more. Welcome. Hi, thank you. All right, so we're going to have all the latest SDCC news in just a bit, but for, we're, first we're going to chat with Patrick. Uh, to ask questions for Patrick or us later on, um, you can tweet us at SD underscore comic underscore con, or uh, you can use the hashtag SD concast. Uh, we will also be keeping an eye on the YouTube live chat uh, if you want to post a comment there. Um, so Carrie, why don't you kick us off? Okay, so Patrick, before we get too far into this, I actually just kind of want to talk about you in general and like how, what made you decide to become an artist? Like, let's just start there. Okay, uh, so, hey, Doc. So, uh, no, right there, yeah, uh, there's Doc. Anyway, sorry, I got distracted like Doug from up. Um, so basically, I've been drawing all my life, which is what most people say, but not because I wanted to, because my brother started. So whatever he did, I would I would copy. He was about five years older than me. So of course he had more drawing time than I did. So he'd always be better than me. And I remember in particular, he would copy the combo covers of this one combo called uh, The Nam. And it was about Vietnam, by, illustrated by Michael Golden. Not like five-year-old friendly material, I, mu I must point out right now when I look back on it. Uh, but the artwork was phenomenal. And he would copy the cover, so I would copy him copying the covers, so it's like a bad photocopy of another bad photocopy. So mine looked horrible, where his looked exact spot on, proportion, everything, and I was like, dang, I hate you right now. I really hate you. Um, so that went on for a couple of years, and it got to a point where I sucked at copying. So I said, well, I'm just going to start drawing my own characters, and I did. And I think in high school, he kind of dropped off, but I kept going with it, kept drawing my own characters. So that kind of went into college where I didn't really learn that much. I went to a, a UC and they didn't really teach you how to draw. So I, I kind of plateaued. And then it was after college that I found a school here in San Diego that introduced me to the world of uh, fine art, illustration, um, a lot more comics, um, but also the world of concept art, you know, developing development for video games, animation, film. And I didn't know that existed. I thought, okay, if you want to do art, you have to be a graphic designer, which I think most people, especially from an Asian family household, they're like, what can you make money in? It's like, I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to be a lawyer. Oh, this art thing, is that going to work? Uh, so that kind of, you know, was it wasn't a, a roadblock for me because I wasn't going to listen to them regardless. So I pretty much, after college, just started taking classes in San Diego, and then I would actually drive to LA quite a bit to take classes from LA artists, because it's you know entertainment capital of the world. Um, the thing was, this was to date myself. This was really before YouTube, no Facebook yet, and the internet was kind of starting. We'll just say starting. Uh, I got my first email, and everyone has their horrible email names from the first email, so I got rid of that fast. But anyways, um, when I moved to L.A., that's when I got opened up to a, a bigger world, and that was at about 2003. So I would work in San Diego as a graphic designer for a military base uh, as a civilian uh, by day, and then on weekends and nights, I would either take classes in San Diego or drive up to L.A. to get better with you know design, drawing, a lot of things that I was missing in my college background. And it was in LA where, you know, I started to just hustle and uh, I would be looking for jobs on any internet forums. Craigslist, when it, when it was about jobs and not about like the dark stuff that it is now. Uh, and just, just kind of hustling, hardcore, like just putting my resume out there left and right, networking. Um, and then finally, I think, 
probably when I started getting into my early 30s, mid 30s. That's when I started to get into the convention game. So I haven't been doing the convention game for a long time. I basically just started 2012. Um, but what I did do was I did do a couple gallery shows before then, and that helped me to develop my voice, my style, which is a lot of the stuff that you guys see, uh, like the wonders and just ma mainly channeling that inner kid in a lot of us. And I think that's why the artwork has, for myself, been a very uh, rewarding as well as reaching a wide audience. Sorry, that grandfather clock, I should have stopped it. Uh, it's been very rewarding because it kind of lets people be a kid again and it channels that inner kid where it's like, oh, okay, cool. You're, 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 you grew up in my age, you grew up in my time, so I, you know, I feel you. Um, and I think that's the thing that I try to do in my art is just be genuine to what I grew up with and uh, genuine to what I like. And I think people really gravitate towards that, especially in the way that I'm presenting it to them. That was a lot. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Sorry. No, that was great. Um, so speaking of the 25 cent wonders in your style, we're, we're all really big fans of the 25 cent Thank you wonders. very much. Um, how did you come up with that idea? So uh, it was at a convention called Designer Con. I remember it was 20, it was either 2012 or 2013, 2013. This guy, he comes up, hey, can you do a sketch commission for me? I'm like, yeah, sure. And he said, can you do one of Star Fox on like a kitty ride? I'm like, okay, sure. Uh, so I did it for him and he was like hella happy. You know, Star Fox, all the characters, it's so cool, thanks. And he walked off. And I was like, huh, that was a lot of fun. So just for, uh, just for fun, my, I remember my friend loved the, the, the crow. So I drew one of, uh, of Brandon Lee. Uh, as a little kid, you know, the crow makeup on a little crow. And I gave it to her, she said, oh, this is so cool, thanks. I'm like, all right, that kind of worked well. So I thought about it over Christmas. I thought, oh, this would be so cool, but I need to come up with a name so that people will like really gravitate towards it. So we're thinking about all sorts of things like, you know, kid rides, kitty rides, little, little rides, uh, little kids, grocery store capers, you know, things like that. Um, and then all, all of a sudden I was just talking with a friend over drinks and like, yeah, what about 25 cent wonders? And he looked at me and he had this glazed look because he had a couple drinks ready, but he was like, dude, yeah, I like that. That's awesome. And then I asked him again in the morning, what do you think of this? Just to make sure it wasn't the alcohol and it was like actually him. He's like, no, it's still good. Yeah. It's still really good. I'm like, all right, cool. So we stuck with that and the hard part. And I, and I think with a lot of artists, it's like you feel like you have to get it done really fast before someone else does it. And part of me felt that, but I really wanted to do a big unveil at Comic-Con. So I really wanted like at least like 12 to 20. I think I did 16 for the initial run. Uh, I just didn't want to do one and just put it out there. And that's it. When I come out, I wanted to come out with a bang. So when I found out that I was coming back to San Diego Comic-Con, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm putting these out. I'm doing the wonders. Let's see what happens. So that summer of, I think, 2014, I had like that first batch of 16 and I released it and it was, it went really, really well. Like I had maybe a couple of the two or three exclusives and those sold out within the first couple of days. Uh, and then the rest did, you know, pretty decent. There are some that were really big misses, um, but it showed me that I was able to knock out a lot in a short amount of time, but cover like so many things that I grew up with. And that's why I want to keep doing it. That's really cool. Um, so you're speaking of having to do like 16 of them all at once basically and i know that mm -hmm. you come out with more each year um do you ever have a, a trouble coming up with an idea for one since you've done so many by this point at first i think i was uh, trying to be like oh i gotta be like do this and do that and um i think a lot of people were giving me suggestions and things and i, and I think what i was trying to do I, I was i was like pushing too hard with coming up with something totally unique, totally different. And what helped me and what helps me in making a list is what story do you want to tell with these? What story from, you know, whatever movie, TV show do I want to add into it? And I think that's when I started actually um, hitting more home runs as is with that story statement. So I think case in point, I think one was called, um, the one that I did for Star Wars called Trash Day, where they're in the, where they're in the trash compactor. You know, that's like a little snapshot from the movie, but told in kind of how I perceived it as a kid and how little kids would play with it. So I think um, some of them I just do kind of standalone. It's like their car or their vehicle. But others, and especially now, I'm trying to push a little bit more storytelling 
because I, I love it when people go and they're just like gushing over a section and you're oh my gosh uh, I wish I had a camera every time people do uh, do that because it's just so it's, it's so warming to see that because it means I'm doing my job of course I probably won't be able to do that because it's kind of creepy taping people but just thought well that's that's awesome um <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about Artist Alley at Comic-Con. And I know there's always a lot of kind of hubbub online about, especially at San Diego, like, mm -hmm. is it still possible for artists to, like, really get noticed in Artist Alley at San Diego because there's so much other stuff going on? So you exhibit in the space. I think you're very success successful in it. How important do you think Artist Alley is to San Diego? Well, I mean, it's part of their mission statement. You know, it's a nonprofit. It's, it's to help you know, show off the artists. So I, I know there's been debate and a lot of things passed around in the past about, you know, getting rid of it, minimizing it. Um, Cause it's kind of sad that it is one of the smaller artist alleys um, from all the conventions. Um, just, just because over the years, it, it, you know, it, it has been taken over by the big booths. But I think what I found is there's, it, it's almost like there's so much noise. Artist alley is like the one quiet that you'll find. And I, and I know people make that a destination, you know, from all over the world, they'll come, I mean, they'll see all the stuff, you have this free grab bags, free this, free that, you know, photo ops left and right. But when you're trying to find unique art, something that stands out, people know to come to Artist Alley. They know that that's where uh, the people are kind of doing their own thing or doing their own spin, their own take on something familiar. Um, and I find that that's the that's the unique thing about any con is the artist alley. I, I feel that it's always the artists that make it. Yeah, Comic Con has grown big, and you know it's become a lot more uh, kind of digestible for everyone. You know, there's there's pros and cons to that for for every for every person. Uh, I think it's good because there is no stigma attached to like going to a comic convention now. Now it's like um, anyone can go, and anyone can appreciate it. But what I like about that is you still have those diehards, those those people that have been coming ever since the beginning for Artist Alley. And that's kind of where, you know, kind of I make my bread and butter. Like everyone always tells me, oh, you should get a booth ready because you ain't so big. Or you should go over here because you have more space. And I'm just like, no, I know the space isn't the bit the biggest uh, or the best. Uh, but it actually, actually, it is the best because people know to find me there and they'll they'll congregate there and they'll hang out and they'll keep coming around. Uh, because it's just so much mm, crap out there. Uh, not necessarily good or bad, but just kind of crap. So, yeah, I think it's important. I, I, I love it. Well, and I completely agree. To me, like, Artist Alley, like, makes the floor. I love Artist Alley. Yeah, I'm glad they haven't gotten rid of it. So, hi, Patrick. Um, so you just returned hi. from um, Comic-Con Columbia. Yes. Yeah, is that right? Where you tweeted, uh, you just recently tweeted photos of your art being used for official signs and looked like shirts mm -hmm. there, which was awesome. Yep. So how did you get involved with that? And uh, how was that experience of being kind of the, it looked like the official artist. Yes, I was the official artist uh, the past two years, which is, which is really oh. awesome. Um, so here's the, the badge. And we actually got Millie to sign it too. Sorry if there's glare. So anyone listening, it's 11. <laughs> Yes, it's 11. Awesome. And then the back, all the guest stars, uh, they put on the back the poster that they had. Uh, so three years ago, actually four years ago, uh, I was approached by someone saying that, uh, yes, we have a Comic-Con Columbia. We'd like to invite you. Would you like to come? Can I follow up with you later? Um, and his name was Alejo. And uh, when I first met him, uh, his English was okay and my Spanish was so-so, so we were trying to communicate. Um, and, and so that's for me where I was like, is, is this legit? So I'm a little, I don't know if this is for real or not. He gave me a pamphlet, you know, a couple of chocolates, a, a bracelet. I was like, okay. And I didn't think of anything of it. Um, so the following March, I get an email saying, hey, are you ready to come? We're ready for your plane ticket. You know, you just need your info. And I was like, uh, I don't know if I want to get my passport number. Is this going to be legit? You know, because I've never heard of it. So I had to hunt down artists that had gone. And I found out that one of my friends now, an artist and artist Ali San Diego, Henry Lau, uh, he had went. So I emailed him and a couple other guys. He's the only one that got back to me. He said, yeah, it's totally cool. I went. It was a lot of fun. 
uh, you should totally do it. It's a great opportunity. I'm actually going back this year. I'm like, oh, sweet. So I went that first year, and uh, yeah, it was just a blast. It was, it was more of a kind of eye-opening vacation just to learn more about Colombia, the city, uh, to break the stereotypes because I had my stereotypes and everyone has stereotypes every time I mention Colombia and the city of Medellin, uh, but it's super metropolitan and they're they have a lot going on in that city which I never knew about. So that first year was more of me just kind of being a spectator, just kind of hanging out, um, and then after the show. They said that, you know, the people here really liked having you here. Would you like to come back again? I was like, sure. Um, and so that's usually before Comic-Con. And then during Comic-Con, you know, I did my thing. I would see them, talk to them. And then how I became the official artist is uh, I remember seeing badges done by uh, another artist, uh, Sean Cheeks Galloway. He had done badges for this Comic-Con. And so I was like, oh, that'd be so cool if I could do badges for Columbia and maybe a poster or something. So I pitched it to them because their badges before were pretty blank. And so I pitched it to them, hey, how about I do the badge art and like a poster and you know, you kind of rebrand it that way. And they're like, oh, that'd be so awesome. That'd be cool. So I did that last year and people loved it. Like the badges, uh, people were actually stealing the badges and I actually didn't get a badge because there were, they were, uh, they were on a, sh yeah there was a shortage of some of the badges. So I didn't even get my badge to like the second or third day because people were trying to collect them like cards, uh, which was kind of cool. Um, and then I did the official poster and that went really well. And then they actually blew them up and used them as signage and the programs, banners everywhere. And I was like, wow, okay, they totally branded it. Uh, and then so when they asked me to come back again, I said, you want me to do the art again? I went, sure. Um, and so that's when I found out that they're bringing all these special guests. So we definitely, we made the badges uh, after, you know, Millie Eleven from Stranger Things, King Slayer, uh, Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones, and then a Venezuelan YouTuber, his name is Dross, uh, who's very popular in South America. So, yeah, and that's kind of how that came to be, and it just gets bigger and bigger each year. Well, congratulations, congratulations. on that. Thank you. Um, um. And looks like well, and looks like, well, a little bit to the beginning. Um, I was introduced to you and your art um, a few years back at Emerald City Comic Con by my oh, friend cool. Christina from Southern California. Um, yeah. How much does social media and these kind of champions of your art that that people that have just picked up? I'm not sure how many of your prints she has, but I, I think it's up there. Um, yeah. so how much does social media kind of play a, have played a factor in your kind of success? <laughs> uh, it, it's helped a lot. Um, actually, before the until my Faisal Wonders took off, the one that really got me kind of on the map was, and where I met Christina was a print called Brownie Coats. It was a tribute, little kid tribute to a Firefly Serenity. And I just did it because I wanted to do it because I love the show and it was so much fun. And somehow that one went viral. It, it just got right, all over. Remember it, yep. Yeah, and I remember I had, this is when I was first starting to sell online. So I wasn't ready for people ordering. Like I was, I was like email, handy, emailing everyone and I didn't have a store. So I was taking orders and writing everything down. It was a big cluster F of just madness. I would just have all these manila envelopes lined up and I just told people, hold on, I got to order more prints, sorry. Uh, and it was pretty chaotic. So that helped propel me on the map through social media. And then I think people got more and more aware, like you know, Christina and everyone else. And then for the wonders, oh man, definitely social media, people sharing. Um, but I think it's actually through the cons where where people will find me, they actually see me in person, interview me, and then um, they'll start sharing what they have or what they got from me. Um, and you know, people interviewing me, things like that, like here, just for instance, like right now. Um, I, I think a lot of it is that is that interaction. Because you see the artwork, um, but I'm a firm believer in, uh, the artwork and the person kind of go hand in hand. So I think a lot of the success of both kind of de kind of depends on, you know, how you treat the fan and how you are with the fan. And for me, you know, I always try to be as genuine as possible, especially with whatever I do. So if I'm a fan of something, then, you know, I'm going to do it. If I'm not a fan of something, then I'm going to not really do it so, because I just don't want to go, yeah, that's a cool doctor. Does he like heal people or what is that? I don't know what that is. He's got a screwdriver. Okay. I don't ever want to be that guy. Um, so I think when people see the artwork and they actually meet me, and I, hopefully, you know, the, the kind of feeling they get is that I truly love what I'm doing and that 
the love is seen in the craft and the and how I draw or the colors and everything that I put together. So I'm hoping that together help, you know makes people want to share it, makes people want to write about it, um, and come back each year because I mean that's what I love is seeing the reaction and then just like me being a fan, them being a fan, us sharing that kind of moment together. Well, based on last year's Comic-Con, I would say that that's working out pretty well for you. <laughs> like, how many line management people did you have? Uh, it was, it, that was super funny, because it just, uh, it just almost, it, it almost like they were multiplying, like, little uh, triples. Uh, so the first, that, I remember preview night, there was maybe, like, one or two people at makeshift signs. Um, because uh, thanks, you know, I know thanks very much to you guys for sharing everything. That was very, very awesome. Um, so people were trying to get the exclusive. So the first day, okay, there was a line. Cool, there's a couple people. There, we had some line holders, and my name was written with a dry erase board marker. Cool. The next day, there was already, uh, which was the first official day Thursday, there was actually two official people with, like, signs with my name on it this time, ri already written. I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. Let's take pictures. And I, told, I showed my wife, hey. Before they leave, let's take pictures. Like, okay, cool. But they never left because there was always a line all day. And then by Friday, there was like three or four people. And I was like, man, it's kind of cool. What's going on? And that day we got crazy because we that was the first year ever. I t me and my wife were like, okay, we got to leave or else we're not going to have a lunch and we're going to pass out. So we actually had to leave and close the, the, the booth for like just an hour. And then when we came back, there was still a line. And I was like, man. And I remember this. I remember this vividly. I remember we, we went to we went to lunch. I told my wife, "Hey, I bet you five dollars is still alive." And she's like, "No, there's not gonna be a line. I'm like, are you gonna owe me five dollars?" Not to be cocky, I was just like betting because I didn't expect it. And then when we saw the line. I was like, "Hey, give me five dollars." She's like, "Shut up." It's like, "Okay, fine." Um, but then by the weekend, there was like a entourage. There was, a, I think, I counted at least eight people with like my name with with sign holders. And then every time my friends would come by, they're like, man, what happened? Like, I don't know. And they're like, wow, you made it. You have line people. I was like, I know. This is so cool. So every day I would just take pictures because you know, I don't ever want to take every, anything for granted. And if that's the only year that happens, then I want to enjoy it and remember it. And if this year I don't get that again, I'd love it to happen again. But I don't ever want to expect anything. Like each year I don't expect to get into Comic-Con just because I know it's hard. So when I do get in, I'm always appreciative. And I kind of want to try to keep that mentality, one, so that I don't set up high expectations, but two, um, so that I don't ever take it for granted because I don't ever want to. Well, I just want to say for me personally, like it was both hysterical and really cool to see like the photos you were posting with like you and the like 10 line people. Like we were so happy for you. Oh man, thank you guys so much. That was, uh, that was just like, wow, that's phenomenal. And then I also wanted to talk a little bit about, I think it was after Comic-Con, you had done some work on James Corden's show, right? Yes. Or James Corden's show? Yes. yes. So tell us about that. Uh, so I was doing like a pop-up shop at a, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm always at a coffee shop called James Coffee. So I was just chilling there uh, doing a pop-up shop at night. And then I'm just looking through my email and it says, late, late show James Corden. I'm like, is this, uh, is this like an ad for my email? And I look and it's, hey, I'm a producer. We're looking to do a segment. I got your, I got your name recommended from uh, you know, so-and-so who worked with you on Alice in Wonderland. Are you available? And I was like, sure. And then someone I got on the phone with him, he told me that it would be a segment about the election and that it had to do with doing storybook illustrations. And then the kicker was, hey, yeah, and Benedict Cumberbatch is going to read it. And I was like, ew, what? What the? Uh, so I got excited. And then I remember when I got that email and I talked to the guy, I called my wife up right away. He said, hey, they want me to work on James Corden's show illustrations. Guess who's going to read it? Storybook. And she's like, Obama? Like, really deadpan? Obama? It's like, wow. It's the late, late show James Corden. You're not even excited. And I didn't say Obama. This is when she got excited. It's like, no. Cumberbatch. She's like, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, thought so. Um, but that was super cool because they really didn't have too much art direction. I, I pretty much art directed a lot of the things. I just threw ideas at them. They made a couple tweaks here and there. 
Uh, but a lot of the, the designs, like, you know, the orange monster designing him as a dinosaur and then um, Bernie Sanders on a unicorn. That was kind of, I just wanted to throw it in there to see what they would say. Uh, and they just, they loved all of it, the quirkiness. So I was like, dude, this is cool. This is like a dream job. Um, and it, it turned out great. It turned out great. Together. So, I mean, so, I mean, that was so fun. That was so a fun ride. I think so, Kim um, had one more question. Yeah, um, yeah, um, um, I tweeted a little bit, uh, or maybe uh, more than a little bit, about working with um, uh, James Coffee in Little Italy. Mm -hmm. um, do you? I think which is think is a little bit more of a workspace than a coffee shop. But do you enjoy that kind of social atmosphere to work in? I haven't. Um, I haven't visited yet. I've been meaning to, yes. but I, I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, for me, well, that is like. I think I started going there maybe last year when my wife told me about the spot. I mean, we had been there before, but they've really changed it. And I think why I like going there even more now is because yeah. they all know you there. It's almost like here's like everyone knows your name type of thing. Um, it, it's just a, a comfortable space where I think when a lot of people go there at first, they, they feel like it's very hipster. But when you kind of strip that away, it's almost like a mom and pop shop, um, a mom and pop coffee shop. Just they dress really nice or they they're they dress very hip uh, that's the best way I could put it um, and why I like working there is just because I'm surrounded by so many different people you know some are creatives but others are like there's there's like a crap ton of marketing people that work there it's amazing uh, but it's just an eclectic bunch of people and I love that energy because it kind of spurs new ideas on um, and it helps keep my mind going because I know a lot of times when I am working in my office I, I'm kind of in my own bubble so it kind of gives me that little bit of release to get outside of the bubble and you know have a little bit more fun. And uh, I, I think that's why I like working there so much. That and it keeps me caffeinated, which is great. So always yeah. important. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we've had a couple of uh, questions uh, from some fans, and uh, Melody Torres on the on the YouTube chat asked uh, if you have ever thought of doing any Power Rangers. Uh. I watched it when I was a kid, but I wasn't a super big fan. I've done a couple for like badge art for a convention called Designer Con. I think if I were to get back and and to Drew, uh, Drew, I can't talk, to draw more Power Ranger stuff, I'd actually want to revisit the series a little bit more to kind of get a refresher. Because what I like doing is I like putting little Easter eggs and, and putting little interactions that uh, convey the personalities of the character. So I kind of want to refresh myself on the characters uh, before I did that. But if I were to do it, I think it'd have to be a big one, like somehow they're merging together, you know, fighting the other uh, giant monster robots. Um, but yeah, I'd have to do more research. That's the part that takes the longest for me. That that, that sounds like the research is uh, not too difficult, though, considering it's just watching a bunch of TV and stuff. Oh, yeah. It just sometimes you get so... <laughs> it's just time yeah. consuming. Yeah, you forget you're supposed to work and not watch TV. You're like, oh, wait, I'm doing research. <laughs> Take notes. I'm taking notes. Honest. Um, okay. Also, another question from Reza19. Uh, are you taking commissions? And I'm not sure if that's specific to Comic-Con or just in general. So why don't you uh, answer both? Uh, if it's for Comic-Con, <laughs> um, they can just email me and I'll let them know how the list is. Right now, I'm almost reaching my capacity. Um, so they just need to email me. And the email, it's really simple. It's basically, I want your art, all one word, at gmail.com. And amazingly enough, that wasn't taken when I did it, so it's cool. That All really right. is like right. the best commission email. <laughs> At first, I was like, "Is that a little like egotistical?" But like, no, it's just like I really I want to get your art, so I'm like, "Okay, I'll just do it." It was easy. That's awesome. So before before we let you go, is there anything you can tease about this year's Comic Con? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Are you able to share? Am I able to share my screen or anything? There should be a there should button be a on, the left on the left on there that says screen share a little green okay. a box okay. with an arrow. So there's two, so there's two things. One is first exclusive that you guys are seeing. Guys are seeing. I'm releasing it to you first. Uh, and then the other is a scavenger button hunt that I'm doing with three other artists. Totally free. So uh, let's see if this works. There we go. Okay. So here's the uh, first exclusive. Cruella. Yes. 
So that'll be uh, number one. I'm not sure what day I'm going to release that, but that's number one. Do you guys get the, the title? I cannot see it. Hang on. You might um, have to read it. <laughs> it's a uh, Cruella Summer. Ah. Uh, I know. Clever. Clever. I have to be easy. It's it's part of my mo. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, that's the first exclusive. Uh, I'm gonna have one each day again, and then this is something I'm doing with a a bunch of other artists, three other artists that are all exhibiting there. Uh, we're gonna be doing a button scavenger hunt. So each day there'll be four buttons available that we'll be releasing totally free. Just drop by. I think we're, we're doing 50 of each button. So there'll be 16 different ones. Uh, yeah. So for each day. And then I think maybe a few of us will be doing something preview night. Um, but I'll, I'll, we're, we're still figuring that out. But the theme is, if you can't tell, it's a little bit of a Star Wars theme. So that's what we're going to be doing. And uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Should be some a lot of fun. A lot of fun. That's awesome. And those are some good artists you're working with. I like Genuine Haha a lot. Yeah, these are these dudes. Like that's that's like a a cool lineup, like a heavy hitter lineup for you. So I'm glad that they invited me to try to do this. All right, let me get out of screen share. Well, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited for all of that. So, did we have any other reader questions, James? I haven't seen any others. Seen any others. Uh, so I so think that is that about is. it. All right. Well, Patrick, before we let you go, where can our readers find you online? Uh, so you can find me online on my website, uh, patrickballesteros.com, just my first and last name. And then probably on Instagram, same thing, just my first and last name, Patrick Ballesteros. And you'll find me my logos, like the little astronaut kid helmet thing with a green background. Uh, so yeah, you can find all my stuff there, t-shirts, all that jazz, and then I'll be releasing a lot more stuff later on. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. We really appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you guys. Thank you for thank everything. You, everything. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. And I'm sure we'll be talking soon. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. Thank you. All right. 56 days, was it? That's crazy. 56 days. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Not ready. Oh. Not ready. <laughs> Uh, if you're not ready, I got to go draw now. Jeez, it gets me all. Okay, I'm going to go draw now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, Patrick. Bye. 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 He's awesome. Yep. <laughs> all right. So we did actually have some Comic-Con news this week about some things that are coming and some things that unfortunately aren't. Kim, do you kind of want to start us off? Uh, and continuing the not offsites or offsites that are not happening this year. Um, um, Hardwick, Chris Hardwick in a, in a kind of live stream he did last week on Facebook announced that um, Nerdist, his Nerdist shows would not be returning to the Balboa. I'm hearing an echo. I apologize. Um, so we kind of already knew that because those spots had been taken. Um, by what were they taken by? by. It, they were taken by a couple of different things. Yeah, uh, Mystery Science Theater three thousand, and then the Adventure Zone, and My Brother, My Brother, and Me. So that's continuing a little bit of a trend for this year. It is. So <laughs> I think it's kind of funny because I feel like I've seen a lot of people online like speculating that there is like some conspiracy <laughs> or something. Because we have had an awful lot of cancellations this year. Or not cancellations, but I guess just things that have been a long-standing tradition off-site wise that aren't going to be there this year. So we had Nerd HQ, now we have Nerdist, uh, Sherlock, SDCC. I never know how to, the world to say their <laughs> off-site name, but that thing. Um, Entertainment Weekly's ConX isn't coming back. There was something else, wasn't there? Uh... Oh, well, Did I we? Oh, oh yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Enchantment. Enchantment's not coming back this year. But we at least provided an alternative. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> we did. So I mean, it does feel like an awful lot of things are not happening this year, which is it, it's pretty disappointing. And I don't know. I mean, I definitely don't think there's any big conspiracy going on. I think. <sighs> I don't know. James, you kind of had some thoughts about this, right? About like maybe why all of this is happening now? I think, I think it's kind of, I know people have been talking about there's got to be a, a 
Comic-Con bubble bursting at some point. And I mean, in discussions, it's kind of like, well, kind of like maybe, but not really because conventions are still hitting attendance highs. And I think what it is, is just like a, a shifting for companies who come to Comic-Con in San Diego because it is the big one and they can't necessarily come here every single year and have something um, because, you know, for, for Chris Hardwick, he mentioned just how stressful it is just not knowing what guest he's going to get until two weeks before the show, but he's had tickets on sale for over a month beforehand. Uh, so I think it's a little bit of, of, you know, some of the people who are doing the organizing and doing the putting on of these offsites, just not wanting to do the work every single year, because I mean, look at us, we, we didn't want to do the work of enchantment this year because it is such an undertaking. Such an undertaking. And what we do and, is like total small fries compared to what any yeah. of these other people do. Yeah. So I, so, think, I think a lot of people don't realize, one, the amount of money it takes to put on an offsite during Comic-Con. And I personally, I hope that like if there is any kind of bubble bursting, it's the bubble bursting of like how dang expensive it is to host <laughs> A party <laughs> during Comic Con, like if you've never looked into it, it's ridiculous. It okay? is ridiculous, and that's and, it is and ridiculous. Even even places ten blocks away are, are are ridiculous, and and they're not even right next to the convention center. So, so yeah, I don't think it's 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 a bubble bursting so much as just a shifting of priorities for some companies. Um, we're obviously still getting things. Um, like uh, we're getting the Sci-Fi Live still, we're getting Conan still, and we're getting what was the uh, one you're about ready to announce here is coming back. But there are others that are dropping out, and I think it's just going to see this shifting and moving. And some may come back, and some may stay away, and others may go and do something in another city or another convention, or even do their own convention, like we heard Hasbro's doing their own convention now. So who knows what's going to happen as, and I think it's also indicative that there isn't a bubble if companies like Hasbro are doing their own conventions. That means conventions are still popular and are still a money maker for people who want to make money off of them. I think, I think we may just be seeing like, to me personally, I feel in a weird way, like Nerd HQ and Nerdist are both not happening this year for the same reason, even though, like on paper, they're totally different. But basically, Nerdist isn't happening is because Chris Hardwick has so much other things going on, including his own convention that ID10T, even though it's, uh, it's I want to say idiot. It's the idiot. idiot festival. Come on. Sorry, I don't want to pronounce it correctly. It's idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not happening. Like he's not coming basically, I think because he's so busy with so many other things. And I feel like the reason Nerd HQ isn't happening is because a lot of their sponsors are busy at a million other conventions and they just can't like devote the resources necessarily this year to Comic-Con that they normally would. And so to me, like I do feel a little bit like the market's overcrowded, but like you just said, I feel like we're all just basically in like a big evolution of what Comic-Con offsites are going to be. And stuff is going to happen. Like stuff is happening. Conan's back. Um, that's we didn't mention earlier. All this stuff is still going to be there. And we're also just in this like really awkward early time period where unfortunately we're hearing more, I think, about what's not coming back. Whereas here in like a month, it'll all the news will be here's what is coming rather than what isn't. So... Yeah, just let's hurry up with that stuff. That's the fun stuff. Yeah, let's get let's get into that. So who's doing that? That's that Kim. That's that's my two cents. Gary. Gary. What? Gary, so what is coming back? What is coming back? Um, Nintendo Lounge is for sure coming back this year. They announced that, and it'll be at the Marriott again. They haven't announced hours or what new games will be there. They always have new games that you can play and cool things and character meet and greets and all kinds of stuff, uh, tournaments. But they did announce that they'll have a bunch of their popular games that are out right now that you can play, like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a whole bunch of stuff. So it's always a fun time. Um... I've heard, and Kim, you may correct me if I'm wrong on this, I've heard that theoretically you're supposed to have a badge for that, but I've always heard that no one ever checks for the Nintendo Lounge. So it's, you, 
and you can pretty much go and be fine. Is more or less what I've heard. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so uh, well, it's always changing. Thing, I mean, it's always you know hit or miss, but you never know what they're going to do this year. But it never hurts to try. It never hurts. Never to hurts to try is the perfect motto for Comic Con. Yep. That's right. So another thing that we do know of is happening, and we've kind of known about this for a while, but now you can actually, there is a way to attend, uh, is the Winona Earp fan party that's happening on, I believe, Thursday of Comic-Con. They announced an Indiegogo campaign for the season one Blu-ray of Winona Earp, and you can buy a couple different perks for Comic-Con, including you can spend $250 to get guaranteed front-of-the-line access to go to the party where the cast will be, and they'll have whiskey and donuts and all kinds of cool stuff. Or you can also pay $750, which includes the party, and then you'll also be one of 10 people to go to lunch with the cast. And then... Uh, the interesting thing was that they said that the party was for 250 people, but I think it's only 60 of the tickets are on sale through the Indiegogo. So that leaves 190 spots open, and they haven't announced anything about how those 190 spots will be available, if they'll be available. They haven't announced anything. But if you're poor... <laughs> <laughs> or you don't want to drop $250 on the party. What I feel you. <laughs> and two, it sounds like there may be potentially other ways to attend. So if you want they guaranteed didn't access. Where it is either. They what? They didn't announce where it was either. Um, cause last year the event was at um, the Comic Arts Gallery, which is on Liberty Station, which is a ways away from downtown. I mean, relatively still close to downtown, but, but uh, so they, you know, you don't quite know where you'll be going either. For But it's got, I was just looking it up, it's got 309 backers and $2,600 raised so far. So good job then. Pretty good, yeah. yeah. And the party is still available. 22 out of 50 have been claimed. And I don't see the 750 thing. Maybe that's gone. Maybe the lunch is sold out. No, are you sure? Let's look. Oh, it's featured. Sorry. one Only one out of 10 claimed. It was up at the top. There so you go. still nine spots left for you herpers out there. I want to drop some bucks. So what else is happening, Kim? Oh, um, so we also have, let's see, the, the blood drive. Um, the appointments were put online on the San Diego Blood Bank website. Um, and uh, they do always, always allow walk-ins are more than welcome and no badges needed. Um, and it's a wonderful thing that they've done. It's uh, we did the math, and it's going to be looks like it's going to be their 40th anniversary. So that's you know hopefully they do a, a big thing for that. Maybe have a lot of cool giveaways. Um, we know that the um, the geeky hooker has done some crochet um, little characters, adorable things that she'll be giving to them um, for their giveaways. And last year they had T-shirts. Uh, and they kind of just tease that they're still working on their giveaways for this year. But as the 40th anniversary, hopefully they do something cool. Yep. Uh, there's there's a, cur a discussion going on in, in the YouTube live chat about whiskey and donuts. So if anyone wants to uh, check that out and, and comment, just, just FYI. Nothing to do with the show itself. Um, so... Uh, we have a few exclusives that were announced the, this last week as well. And uh, first up is the second Hasbro exclusive, the Marvel Legends series Battle for Asgard 5-pack. Uh, it features Jane Foster Thor, Malekith, Ulick the Troll, original Thor as Odin's son, and Boar. Uh, it's going to be $99.99. Uh, it looks pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Uh, it comes in a collector's <laughs> case that... that Kind of, kind of rolls out, out and each one is in like a its own display, display piece. It, it's really cool. Go, go on the website and check the website. 
It is really um, cool. I, I think this is going to be pretty popular. Yeah. yeah. The Marvel ones usually are. I mean, they do some really good stuff for the Marvel exclusives. They bring like the Infinity Gauntlet and such each year. They're really cool. Um, the other exclusive was announced uh, today, if I recall correctly. And it's a, it's a summer exclusive from Mezco. It's a, a exclusive lion with light-up eyes. And it's uh, one of their larger figures. It's a 14-inch, and uh, it'll feature, uh, like I said, the light-up eyes, an open mouth, roaring head. It's going to be, a, you know, basically it's lion with the sword and everything. Um, it'll be $40, and you can pre-order it now. And uh, he will be shipping after Comic-Con. We had something else get announced today as well. Uh, Entertainment Earth started their rollouts, and they typically announce an exclusive basically every weekday, I believe. Um, but the first one this year was for a Twin Peaks. It's a bobble monitor mate of the Twin Peaks sign. And I said this when we were offline, but why in the world, if you're making the sign, like, why would you make it bobble? Like, it's a sign. Shouldn't it just like be a little statue and stand stationary? Am I wrong? No, I mean, I mean, if you want to shoot things at it, so you know, you can watch it bobble. I mean, you can throw stuff. But why would you want to do that? Yes. To a sign. Yeah, why would you want to? I don't know. I don't know. As Kim said, unless there's going to be like an earthquake in tw t Twin Peaks, like, <laughs> does this make sense? But no one asked me. And uh, we also had the announcement of uh, the very first Factory Entertainment exclusive. And yes, that one is the Justice League Cyborg Metal Miniature. And uh, this one will be limited to 500 pieces. They're coming out with a whole Justice League line of metal miniatures. And this is the first one. And of course, the first one is going to be the hard one to get because it's going to be a Comic-Con exclusive. Um, um, let me see. Where is the... I know there are other prices on here somewhere. But um, I want to say it's forty. Okay, and uh, you can actually, if you uh, go to the Factory Entertainment page on our exclusive uh, on our site, uh, you can actually enter to win one of these. One of these right now. Otherwise, you can place an order for pickup uh, or have it shipped after the con. Yep. Yep. And there will be a new Factory Entertainment exclusive coming every Tuesday and Thursday. So look for another one from us at 10 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Sweet. Woo. And while we don't have any actual panel news this week, which panel confirmation should be going out, I think, next week, um, I did want to mention that we've been doing our annual compiled list of all the TV shows that we think might or might not be at the convention, which honestly... Even though it's kind of a pain to write, like these are some of my favorite posts that we do all year because it's so fun. Like we're in the early part of the year where like anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> so it, so it's fun to just like look at all the possibilities and be like, this can be amazing. Um, we did the broadcast networks on Monday. We did cable today and family networks should be coming on Friday. So if you've been wondering if your favorite TV show is going to be at the convention, you can go and read our reasoning on why we think it might be there or not. Um, and hopefully it's just a fun read anyway. Like I love stuff like that. So the world is so still full of magic and wonder. It is at this point, <laughs> unless we're talking about off sites. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were trying to go from the bad news to the good news and stay yeah. in the good news. I, and no, I just killed it. No. But I then, just, but then, if you read some of these TV ones, it's like, no, there's really not a chance that show is coming. No. And then you're right back to the bad news. And so, yeah, I know. Somebody read it with that earlier, caution, like, people. Read it with that caution. Someone tweeted me earlier, like, "What are the odds the OA comes?" And I was like, "It's not." <laughs> <laughs> like it's Netflix, it's just not. <laughs> so uh, I also wanted to mention that any remaining hotels are now available. So if you were shut out during Hotel Apocalypse, if you still need a hotel, you can go grab one at the convention rate. Now, none of these are downtown hotels, but uh, as of when they went up the other day, I haven't looked at what's left now, but all but Dana on Mission Bay have a shuttle to the convention center. So. It's a hotel. You don't have to sleep on the sidewalk. Isn't um, that really the important thing? <laughs> you have a place to shower, which is even more yeah. important thing. Yeah, and really, it's just a room. You're never there. 
It's Comic Con. Yeah. So, yeah. like I said, if you were shut out during Hotel Apocalypse, go get your hotel room. Somewhere, anywhere, just have a place. With the 24 hour yeah. shuttles these days, it's, you know, amazing. Yeah, so like I said, just go stay, just don't stay at the Dana on Mission Bay. You're fine. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a shuttle. <laughs> How, is there Uber boat? Is there Uber boat? I don't think there is the an bay. Uber boat. You get across the bay. <laughs> it's 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 Dana on the bay, right? So, no. Yeah. I don't it's still, know. Never mind. Only from Coronado, James, and it's not an oh. Uber. Is there a one from? Is there a or, or Coronado Uber? There's from, a ferry. Boat? It's called a ferry. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh. what are you talking about? Like, there's a ferry, it's not an Uber. <laughs> Is it not all forms of now, might still have an Uber. Is it, it does. Is it a good fairy or an yes. evil fairy? Oh, you think you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> no one else does. <laughs> I think everybody's laughing. So I win. Do you? Do you really? Yes, I always <laughs> win. Okay, so. <laughs> Moving on. Back to the news. To the news. <laughs> uh, parking uh, is still on sale through Ace. Um, group four is going on right now, and only the convention center is sold out. Although I think some of the Bayfront is sold out I think for certain some days. Some of the Bayfront is sold out as well. I think this note is actually from last week. <laughs> okay, I think the Bayfront may be sold out for most days, if not. Uh, I think Wednesday might be still yeah. left. That's what I was um, thinking. A uh, new group every Monday uh, through six groups, and then the public on sale is June 12th, and there will be parking available. It may not be the really close stuff, but there will be something. Um, and, and if you don't want to park... Oh, uh, oh go ahead. I was just going to say, if you don't want to pay to park, don't forget that you can also use our Uber and Uber Eats code again this year. Uh, so if it's your first time using Uber, you can use the code SDCCUBLOG on Uber for up to $20 off your first ride, or you can use Eats Ublog 17 for $10 off your first order on Uber Eats. So that's a cool way. Okay, uh, real quick, let's get to some of the uh, questions that I've seen on the chat. Uh, I think we can answer these fairly quickly. Um, Cavi Warrior asks, uh, how, many, how much longer for the news to really ramp up with 56 days out? I mean, like, Starting Pretty next soon. week or the week after is when it starts to really pick up because we're going to get panel confirmations going out even though they're not allowed to announce certain information about their panel um, and by certain dates. Um, and then we'll start getting things like exclusives and studios and whatnot. We'll start revealing what they're bringing or if they're coming at all. And I just want to point out, it's like this every year. Mostly what we have to get past right now is Memorial Day. Once we get past that, then like everyone is in full-on Comic-Con mode. Right. But right now, everyone's head is like three day weekend, so that's why it's kind of a quiet week. And uh, Pat E asked, "When will Conan tickets be available?" And I'm pretty sure that was like the beginning of July last year. It was July eighth last year, so not for a very long time. Right. Um, that may change, but don't expect it until then. And there will be plenty of warning. Uh, a couple people asked if Xbox Lounge is coming back, and I think Carrie might know the answer to that one. Um, Magic 8-Ball says not looking likely. <laughs> not likely. Not likely. Is what I've heard through the grapevine. Um, but having said that, I haven't been able to get them to officially confirm. But I would not count highly on that one. Um, there you go. The, <laughs> that is my answer. Uh, David Norwood asked... When is the free cyborg giveaway? And he's talking about the factory entertainment giveaway. It's going on right now. I believe that the rafflecopter is set to end, I think, on Monday of next week. I think it runs for seven days. Um, but basically, you can go onto our site, just go to the factory entertainment exclusives page on our site, and you can, all the information for how to enter is on there. All right. Uh, when are WB bags typically announced? And Probably sometime in June, end of June. Uh, I would it's, say July. It, it, it might be July. I think they announced them earlier than usual last year. Maybe. Uh, so, so we'll just have to wait and see. And then um, 
the final question from uh, Melody or it is, does the shuttle start on Wednesday? And it does. It does. It does. It does. So did we, I'm just going to check real quick. Do we have any questions on Twitter? No, we did not. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we all done? Oh, no. Kim? So we are giving away a copy of uh, Geeky Hooker, speaking of her, Literary Yarns. And that is on our site. On so our please sign up there. And we will be back next week with some more awesome special guests, including Sean Richter, who I know a lot of you know on Twitter. He's awesome. As well as Andy. Uh, <laughs> I wish I knew how to pronounce his last name. Uh, Bed Backed. I'm sure I mispronounced that if you're listening, Andy, and I'm very sorry. Um, but we will be here next week with them talking about cosplay, talking about like covering the convention. It'll be fun. Sweet. You can also sign up for our newsletter. The link is going to be in the show notes on the post on our site. Uh, as always, Kim? Um, um, our Under the Tents column is back and blissfully still on a once per day schedule for the time being. Um, that will probably be going to a day very soon. I have a feeling. Yes. Uh, real quick, we had a quick question in the chat. When can we expect badges to be mailed? It'll be... Uh, I believe it's roughly three weeks before the convention. So you're probably looking at like late June. So. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you to Patrick Balsteros for joining us. And uh, we hope you join us every week as you, we bring you news, opinions, and special guests leading up to San Diego Comic Con 2017. Kim, where can we find more of your work on the internet? I am uh, Outside Comic Con on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And Carrie, where can we find more of your work on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Carrie Dixon, though as we get closer to the convention, I'm never logged in, but I am logged into the blog Twitter. Uh, James, where can we find more of your work on the internet? I am everywhere on the internet at Dan Regal, and you can check out geekshotphoto.com for photography from my wife and I. We are on iTunes. If you'd like to subscribe, the links are up on the blog, or you can search for SD Concast. If you like what you've heard so far, please review us. We are also on Stitcher Radio, and the link is in the show notes. If you want to get a hold of us, you can send us an email at sdcomiccon.blog at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash sdconblog, or tweet us at sd underscore comic underscore con. Thank you all for listening, and everybody, go, go Shwarma! Shwarma.